I was just about to say good morning, um, but what I've realized is that people might be watching um, this recording uh, at any point of the time um, of day. Um, so whenever you're watching it, uh, I hope you find it of value and of interest. Um, Pete Dwyer, Corporate Director of Children and Young People Services, and absolutely um, delighted to be in role. Uh, and I'm six months into post, um, this week six months into post, and it's a great opportunity for me to share um, some of the work that we've been doing in that six months and hopefully receive your feedback about that work. Um, when I came into post, um, we've spent a lot of time um, in um, the leadership team um, at the department, but also um, with partners across the school community and across other agencies, talking about leadership. And the first thing I want to talk about um, in this session is about our leadership pledge and about the style of leadership you can expect um, from um, myself and colleagues um, in um, the department. Um, we, we live and work and in a different um, time. Um, the times when um, County Hall dictated what happened across the partnership agenda um, are long gone. Um, the levers of power have changed. Clinical commissioning groups, freedoms, autonomy for school have created a new world. Uh, we need to respond to that world in a positive way. Um, and so we've talked a lot in our leadership pledge about the importance of us having a style of leadership which is ambitious, um, which is inclusive, and which recognises those different levers of power. It's a complex world and our job is to make sure that it doesn't disintegrate into chaos. Um, I believe we can do that and the leadership pledge has been warmly welcomed across um, um, colleagues. Um, I, I mentioned the word ambition um, and for me um, um, when I first became a director of children's services um, I was asked um, a question by a group of six-year-olds um, um, Mister, um, what's your job? What do you do? Um, and that's quite a challenge, isn't it, to describe a complex job. But in essence, it's to make this place one of the very best places in the world to grow up in. Um, I hope that ambition um, is optimistic, um, but not naive. Um, we need to be really inclusive. We need to use all the talents of all um, institutions, of all of the sector, of all of our partners if we're going to make progress in delivering I am that vision of making it one of the very best places in the world to grow up in. Um, one of my favorite quotes is the quote that says, um, cherish your dreams and um, they are the children of your soul. They are the blueprint of your ultimate achievements. Um, and for me, that functions at an individual level as well as a collective level. Cherish your dreams. They are the children of your soul the blueprints of your ultimate achievements. Um, given the agenda we work on, improving the outcomes for children and young people, um, um, that's what gets us up in the morning. Um, surely we should be as ambitious as everywhere for those young people. Um, I was checking out with colleagues um, at a session of senior managers in the directorate last week about what progress are we making in delivering against that leadership pledge. Um, and the feedback I was receiving was reassuring. Um, people were describing um, greater levels of autonomy and freedoms um, within um, the directorate um, to lead um, this challenging agenda. People were describing um, opportunities to work in partnerships, um, stronger partnerships at children's trusts, safeguarding boards and across the school community. Um, people were describing new relationships um, within the directorate, um, a lot more thematic discussions about our improvement priorities. Um, and we've worked hard to establish new relationships um, with academies, um, new relationships with um, the Department of Education, with Ofsted regionally, with the National College. Some of that's been re-establishing those relationships. Um, but if we're going to um, make real progress against this agenda, we must harness the talents of the whole community um, um, in that common quest. What I do get a sense of is a real moral purpose, a real sense that we have a shared desire um, to deliver the very best, both in terms of education and other outcomes for our children and young people. So colleagues, um, enough about our leadership approach. Um, let's move on to talk about those um, challenges that we will apply that leadership approach to. What are the big challenges? What are the big issues that we need to make a difference about for children and young people in North Yorkshire? Um, 
in my view, um, we take strength from our successes and we build from those successes to deliver change and tackle the difficulties we still face. Um, so let's firstly celebrate some of the successes that we have. Um, we live in a county um, um, where some of the outcomes are already fantastic for children and young people. Isn't it great um, that if you look at the rate of offending of young people in this authority, it is reducing, reducing significantly and far lower than in other places. If you look at the re-offending rates of young people, um, that is reducing as well. Isn't it great that we work and live in an authority where uh, the key stage four results for our young people um, those results that make such a difference in terms of long-term outcomes are in the top 10% um, in the country. The top 10% of authorities across the country are the kind of outcomes that we aspire to and we create at Key Stage 4. Um, if we believe that education has that potential to liberate individuals and communities, um, that's a really powerful indicator and a strength. Isn't it great that um, a recent survey of young people um, heard them describing um, um, a reduction in the um, access to drug and alcohols um, for those young people um, and a delaying in the time that those young people um, got engaged in um, sexual relationships. All things that we should be proud about and things we should celebrate um, because out there in the media it's often not the picture uh, that's portrayed about our young people. However, we should turn that and challenge ourselves um, about the areas where we can do so much better. So let me run through what some of those key priorities need to be. Um, and let's concentrate on outcomes, um, because that's what really matters. Um, yes, some great educational results for many, um, but hidden behind that are some real concerns. Um, we were disappointed with Key Stage 2 results this summer. Um, and we need to work hard to make sure that our primary education prepares young people well um, for their future um, secondary education. If you look at our performance in narrowing the gap and closing the gap um, in terms of the outcomes achieved by young people on free school meals and those across the rest of the um, community, um, you will see we do less well. Top 10% for Key Stage 4, as I've said, but bottom quartile in the country, 122nd of 150 authorities in terms of the, the width of that gap uh, between those on free school meals on the rest. We need to make sure that education creates success for all and not just for the more able. Um, the head of offset, um, Michael Wilshaw, challenged areas like North Yorkshire to say that we were too complacent around outcomes achieved um, in rural and coastal areas. I don't think we are. Um, when, uh, certainly the head teachers I've spoken to aren't complacent, um, but clearly there is a challenge there about raising the ambition, aspirations, um, and we must have an attitude um, that is um, can do. It must not be uh, a language that uses explanations and excuses for, um, for poor outcomes for all of our children and young people. Um, behind some of the percentages are real numbers and real lives. Um, so yes, we should celebrate the fact that the rate per thousand of looked after children in North Yorkshire um, is lower than in other places. But given the levels of deprivation, so it should be. Um, and if you, whilst the care population has stabilised, um, there are still 493 young people who aren't being looked after and cared for by, within their own families, but are being cared for um, within um, the state. Um, what does that mean about uh, the support that we're providing, the early intervention support that we're providing, um, when that number of children need to be in our care system? Um, it's a real priority. I am concerned, um, and there's a real work to do to improve um, the emotional well-being of our young people. It's a stressful world that they're growing up in, and there can't be enough that we can do to make sure that the right levels of support, early intervention, early promotion of well-being, reductions in bullying um, take place across our county. And when young people are in our care system, we need to ensure that they deliver, um, that we deliver um, some of the very best outcomes for those young people. Um, to achieve that, we need to make sure that they have continuity of education, that they are prioritised within our education system, and I am concerned 
that for looked after children and for some young people in the um, youth offending service that we're not delivering the highest quality of educational um, improvement and outcomes for those young people that we should be doing. Um, we also need to make sure that those young people wherever possible are living in family settings um, living locally in family settings um, and I spoke at a conference um, just last weekend and it was a delight to meet some 200 foster carers across North Yorkshire. They are an asset, we need to make sure that we grow that group and make sure that they can care safely and well for our most vulnerable young people. I talked earlier about um, the feedback that we received from a major survey that was done on the views of children and young people. Lots to celebrate. Um, one of the key issues that concerned me was around internet safety. Um, here we had um, hundreds of young people, um, thousands of young people, describing their access to the internet. And that's um, a real strength and real opportunities that can be there. Um, what they described is a lot of training that they'd received in internet safety, um, really encouraging. What they then went on to describe was the th fact that they weren't using that training in their use of the internet um, and real risks that were arising in terms of approaches that were being made to those young people um, through that medium. We need to explore uh, what more we can do in that area. Um, at the same time as tackling particular outcomes um, within our community, um, we also need to be aware um, that there are some changes in terms of statutory responsibilities that are coming our way. The New Children and Families Bill, in particular, it, its emphasis around changes in special educational needs and our work with children with disabilities will be a big priority going forward. And all of this work, colleagues, you won't need reminding, is taking place within a particular financial context. Um, and it might be worth me spending a few minutes describing um, that context. Um, the authority has um, delivered some significant savings over the course of the last four years. Um, those savings have predominantly been made without a reduction in frontline services. Um, it's been made through efficiencies, through different ways of working, through greater forms of collaboration, through creative use of grants. Um, but we have got through as an authority this pe first four years um, of austerity. £90 million will be saved by the authority during that 2011 to 15 period. Um, as we look ahead, um, you won't be surprised to hear, you've seen the national headlines, um, it isn't going to get in any easier. And because of what we're gonna, we've been through already, it is going to get even harder. Um, so the savings projected um, for 15, 2015 to 19. Um, are of some £70 million that are required across the authority um, and we um, cannot be left untouched by the scale of that challenge. We will be applying the principles of our leadership pledge um, to that financial challenge and discussions and work are started already um, to see uh, what options exist. Our role as officers is to deliver options for members to make those decisions and they will be difficult decisions. Um, we need to ensure that we are sharp, not only about our priorities, but about what works and what delivers against those priorities. That's the way that we'll make progress. Um, and that's the way that we'll continue to try to deliver great services, great outcomes for children and young people in North Yorkshire. I mentioned earlier the importance of us being sharp about our priorities. And that sharpness needs to apply across partnerships. Um, so I'm pleased that the Children's Trust have initiated a process of developing a new children and young people's plan. That plan will be developed um, over the coming months um, and will be published early in 2014. Um, it will be a shorter document than previously. It will be engaging, exciting documents.